Do you want to get your education on? You want to be learned, learned, like Jason says. But maybe you're thinking, I can't afford it. It's just too much money. Well, it's a great investment. And the University of Guam is coming up to tell you how you could shave a couple bucks off. It's called a college affordability webinar, and it's a thing that they're doing that we're going to tell you about coming up here, uh, 926. But first, Tomas Manglotnia of, uh, well, he's of KUAM News, but he covers <laughs> regional like, you gonna <laughs> say regional uh, yes. issues. Tomas, good there was morning, everyone. Good morning. Before yeah. you get into your thing, I wanted to say that was pretty cool about that kid. He's a yes. Guam kid. He yes. first solo Amazing. flight. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. We just posted it on our social media. Uh, I was chatting with his dad this morning. Wonderful story. 16-year-old Lawrence C. Limtiago flies solo from Guam to Saipan. Uh, he's doing this as a part of his uh, private uh, pilot license. Uh, he did the flight uh, on uh, on Sunday uh, went, went after visiting Saipan, went to Rota, then back to Guam, landed around 12.14. He's going to do another flight this weekend, and wow. we might be there to see it and bring it to you all. And just what an amazing, I mean, that's cool. you know, what an amazing yeah. talent. That is awesome. Yeah. And he's 16 years old, but it makes me think of that show, Little Big Shots, you know? <laughs> it was kind of like a lot of people commenting that he's, uh, you know, he's probably one of the coolest people around. That so. is awesome. Yeah. And, you know, the, I know the flights are crowded, so maybe he could be doing like a charter <laughs> service, uh, you know, to help uh, out a little bit. They're still uh, testing on arrival yeah. <laughs> on Saipan from Maybe from we could Guam, get him, so. like, if you get to go on a flight with him, but you get him to bring back a load of a piggy gee and uh, the blueberry. Um... That's how he's going to get his license. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, yeah, I can't wait. And uh, we we were able to get a photo of him. Uh, is this on? Uh, yeah, this so is on. It's on our Instagram. What's with the uh, uniform? Because I was like, whoa, is he sixteen? He's already enlisted. He's in J Rotsy. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's in a uh, he's a, a motocross racer, also an assistant commander of the N J R O T C. Can you give it to Joe sir, so oh, he okay. can show it? Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, that's the Naval J. Rotsi yeah. program over at Father Duenas High School, Jason. So, he, so he's pretty much like a type A personality, consummate uh, overachiever. Well, that's a compliment, right? Yeah. Now. He's yeah. Re- basically a, yeah. really, really good. I've actually he heard does. it used as an insult, but in this case, it is a compliment. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful student. I can't yeah. wait to see him. Who I would mean... ever take overachiever as an insult? No, type A. Oh. <laughs> I've been called that many times as well. Right, yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, that's awesome, man. Well, also, I've also been called a lot of words that begin with an A, but you so know. So he's uh, he's uh, f- um, sure to be a, a naval aviator, a naviator. Yeah, what a just w- what a wonderful story, and so glad he's able to do this. You know, I mean, a lot of things were cut down in this pandemic. Right. So when yeah. I thought about this, I was like, wow, he's still making the time of his life uh, flying these planes. Can I, can I make a suggestion, Tomas? When you write the story up for tonight, let's make like the headline: Top Gun: Colon. All right, Jace, you got aviator. it. You got it. You know. You you make the calls here, so I will. I mean, we could, <laughs> I'll write that headline. We could just go all day with the headline ideas. Yeah. You know, F D student soars, or you know, <laughs> Maverick. Uh, he may have did it solo, but there's a lot of people he wants to thank. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so uh, Tomas <laughs> McLaughlin here, regional news. That was just kind of like the feel good, fluffy uh, thing, but there's a whole lot of others going on, including. Uh, Sadly, Luta's first uh, COVID cases. Yes, Tomas. yes, and so for the first time ever in the course of this pandemic, Rhoda reported on Friday its first COVID nineteen cases, uh, and this morning uh, we just received news of two more positive cases. Uh, the details uh, of that uh, of those case reports on Rhoda have yet to be released from the Rhoda Health Center, though we confirmed the information with the PIO for the mayor's office, Ivan Marib. Uh, so the case count on Rhoda is four. And again, these are the first ever cases in the course of this pandemic. Uh, I was looking back at our stories, uh, guys, and uh, last time I was on Rota about a year ago, we did a story on how they've never had a COVID case in a year. And so two years later, uh, we're seeing with the surge of Omicron, again, not confirmed what variant it is, but uh, Rota seeing that case. Uh, and so uh, the, we we did an interview with the Rota mayor's office uh, with Mayor Ephraim Atteleg. Uh, he was saying that uh, they tested positive at the Rota Health Center, we know at least one of them had travel history, and also uh, they did identify Hotel Valentino as the temporary quarantine site, and this is huge, right? Because previously you would have to, the plan was to send these positive cases to Saipan, but now they have that temporary uh, case, uh, temporary quarantine site on Rota. And so uh, here's the full interview uh, just the day after those reports were made of the first cases with Rota Mayor uh, Ephraim Atalig. 
All right, Mayor, thanks for joining us. Uh, we received news uh, last night of the first ever uh, COVID cases reported on Rota, uh, at least two last we heard. Can you give us the status update on COVID on Rota and what you know so far about these first cases? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> these two individuals, you know, as uh, we know, they were uh, tested at the uh, hospital, the Rota Health Center, <clears throat> and that's how they were uh, <clears throat> found to be positive. Uh, so, and um, as, uh, as far as task force also is concerned is that they're not uh, infectious. Uh, so they they were sent to their house uh, under house quarantine and, and uh, guarded by DPS personnel. Uh, for like five days. And can you tell us what Rota's vaccination rate is? Yes, their vaccination rate is at 95% uh, at this point as we speak. And last we spoke, uh, the task force was just uh, having a visit to Rota for a quarantine uh, site uh, identification. Um, <clears throat> is there a quarantine facility on Rota already? Yes, they have uh, identified the uh, Hotel Valentino as a temporary uh, quarantine site. And is it hasn't been used yet because you said the first two cases are in home quarantine at the moment, right? That's correct. That's correct. And uh, I know it's just uh, not even 24 hours since the news has been announced, but in terms of contact tracing, are you uh, seeing that this is a, a contained spread? Uh, you know, when Tinian first announced their cases, they just reported four. Fortunately, it wasn't more than that. What do you know so mm -hmm. far about the spread of this virus on Rota? Okay, so um, <clears throat> these, um, when we had learned about the, the uh, two individuals, you know, we uh, Im immediately um, implemented the uh, contact tracing. And so we all those, um, people that uh, have contacts with the two were uh, tested. And uh, fortunately enough, they were, uh, they came up <clears throat> negative. So thank, thanks for, uh, you know, uh, I'm so proud about that. I'm, I'm glad though. And uh, what's the reaction from the community? Obviously this is, uh, we're two years into the pandemic, but this is a first for Rhoda. So uh, what happens now? Are any new protocols uh, being put in place or is it a matter of contact, tra contact tracing, waiting and seeing? What happens now, given that you know that these are the first cases now? Uh, so yes, uh, we, we're we just right now doing a contact uh, tracing and um, you know, um, I, I will say that we require now the uh, uh, vaccination card uh, upon boarding a, a plane. So um, to help reduce that uh, risk, that's the um, requirement I would like to uh, see that, and I request that through a task force. Uh, so yes, um, we are uh, actively working on uh, contact tracing and testing as a matter of fact. Right. Can you talk to us about testing uh, and <clears throat> are you planning to expand testing or uh, what, what happens? Uh, how, how can people get, get tested on Rota? Um, yeah, so um, with this uh, <clears throat> revelation, uh, we uh, schedule uh, starting tomorrow, um, Sunday and uh, Sunday um, <clears throat> from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. the uh, testing and then also uh, from Monday to Saturday, uh, from uh, uh, 1 to 3 p.m. So we are actively, we, uh, we get into gear, so to speak, to uh, up the gear to uh, test the, uh, our, our residents. And uh, so that's the only way that we can find out uh, exactly how, how severe uh, we are in. And uh, Mayor, what is your message <clears throat> to the community? Uh, this might be alarming to some. I know that schools are <clears throat> back in session. Uh, do you have a message to Rota residents? Oh, yes, uh, Tom, thank you for that question. You know, um, I, I, to the uh, resident of uh, Rota, I highly uh, recommend or uh, encourage them to please uh, get tested uh, because we, this is, um, we're all in this together. And, uh, you know, for, for, for the sake of uh, yourself, um, please get tested. Um, it, it's for you, your loved ones, your family, you know, your, your friends and neighbors and the whole community of Rhoda. So uh, please, I beg of you, 
of uh, people that have not vaccinated to please do so. This is, uh, we're all in this together. All right, Mayor, that's all the questions I had. Did you want to add anything else to that? Uh, well, I'm praying that we stay with the two. And, um, uh, and, and also, Tom, I, I thank you so much for this opportunity to uh, share it uh, with our, our audience and in, uh, our people here you know, on road up in particular. So don't go on as it was All right. Thanks, Mayor. All right. Thanks, Mayor. And uh, also last night, unfortunately, the CNMI recorded its 20th COVID-19 related death in addition to 49 new cases. Uh, since March 2020, there's been 3,600 some cases. 3,300 of those were just since October 21st. And the CNMI has a total vaccination rate of 96.7%. And of course, uh, tune into primetime tonight for our full story. And uh, after that, uh, we'll have another exciting episode of uh, Pacific Matters. Uh, we're checking in with uh, Caitlin Mazuris, who is uh, from Rhoda. She founded Luta Security. She's worked for Microsoft and the Pentagon. She runs programs for the Department of Defense. She runs these things called bug bounties. Oh, yeah, yeah, and bug bounties. And yeah. basically, yeah. you, you put out an award, yeah. a reward for people to hack your system. So she, she oh, pioneered yeah. this yeah. for Microsoft yeah. and for... Uh, and for the Department of Defense ongoing and one, some of her clients include Zoom, which you all might be familiar with. Yeah. And so uh, she's just uh, and she has a roots in Rhoda and she also donated uh, a million dollars to start uh, a lab, uh, a law lab uh, at, uh, in Pennsylvania. Uh, you're going to learn all about it uh, Dude, tonight. I she's got really, here. really cool. Is that red hair or pink hair? Pink hair. She, it's uh, pink hair. And so she has this amazing photo. She talks about her among all of the DOD staff and camouflage. And it's just her pink hair in the middle of it all. Wow. And uh, Seriously, I, I saw yeah. some of your footage of, of the interview with her. I thought yes. I was watching like a Paramore video. And uh, Luta Security is the name of the company. And so, so this bug bounty, they basically dare you to hack their system, Yes, they do. System, right? Because otherwise... People will do it illegally. And, Maybe that's uh, what happened with Revan Tax last week with that email thing that was going on. Well, she's but, for hire. <laughs> and see, that, that is so revolutionary because, you know, like for yeah. someone like me that's been in the business for a while, right? When right. it came yep. to like security big tech intrusions guy. And, yes. and she, being hacked. She was the first to do this yeah. for Microsoft. Be, because yeah. it used to be that like if, if that happened, you, you know, companies would pay millions of dollars to keep right. this hush hush because that's their entire yeah. reputation. Yeah. Yeah. She actually got companies to say, let's do it proactively yep. and let's pay people. There was a movie they made about this. I called, mean, she also. Sneakers. I mean, you speaking of it? movies, movie storylines, she also sued Microsoft Ooh. as well. But she uh, for gender pay discrimination. Uh, I thought it was because uh, Bill Gates and the vaccine thing and all that. Well, <laughs> well, you know, a lawsuit <laughs> is a lawsuit is a lawsuit. So uh, you'll hear all about it. Really, Ooh. really, uh, really amazing person. And who knows? She said she wants to come back home and uh, to to celebrate the holidays next year here at home. So Jay, uh, you're not going to let my that. sneakers movie reference die, are you? Sneakers is a very good movie. Yeah, Great if you flick. haven't seen Sneakers, yeah. it's Robert Redford, it's Dan Aykroyd, Sydney the late Sydney Poitier, Sydney Poitier who yeah, passed Poitier, away, Poitier, rest in peace, Poitier. just died this past week. Yeah. River Phoenix also Defunto. Yeah, Defunto and River Phoenix. Yeah, to go see Defunto and River. That's right. Uh, and basically, see, t- Teluna, Joaquin. It's basically this uh, this <laughs> group of like they're a bunch of. Uh, Ne'er do wells, ragamuffins, rapscallions, and they break into place. They basically get businesses to hire them to break into them to check out how good their security is. And the bad guy is Ben Kingsley, who, by the way, won the Academy Award for playing Gandhi, and it is oh. tremendous. Yeah. It's a little yeah. before your time, though, bro. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, uh, it's in the mid 90s. It's way before your time. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, tonight you can tune into the present time yes, uh, in yeah, Pacific yeah, Matters uh, with Caitlin Missouris. And then we're also bringing back uh, the two twins from Tinian who. Uh, got into harvard we're sharing their story that's awesome we're going to do an encore uh, yeah. presentation of that episode of pacific matters tomorrow right here on the link very cool i'll yeah. tell you what you know what was alive during the mid 90s yours truly and i was at uog i was getting my education i was busting my butt and i was becoming a very very proud triton so let's go straight to our next interview where we are talking about that very topic we have our good friend and a cousin of mine i would say and i know one of the most passionate ardent alumni uh, of Georgia Tech University, so uh, a member of the 